Hi, I'm Timothy Brissell. I'm, uh, I'm Timothy Brissell. I'm my Math 1325 class, and I are about to do a problem uh, using the first derivative test. Uh, the function f of x equals two thirds x cubed minus one third um, no minus thirteen halves x squared plus six x plus eight. In order to find local extrema, we need to find the derivative. So, with your permission, I'm just coming over here to a nice clean sheet of paper. I'm going to write down uh, the function f of x equals two thirds x cubed minus 13 halves x squared plus 6x plus 8 and we need to find the derivative so this is going to work you know something this is going to work out pretty nicely despite the fractions the derivative of 2 thirds x cubed is okay when you bring down that 3 it cancels that 3 there so just a 2x squared minus 13x plus 6. We need to know when is this derivative equal to 0. We're finding our critical numbers so we set that derivative equal to 0. And this is factorable. Y'all see it? We can use a 2x times a 1x and we could use a negative 6 times a negative 1 if we foil that back out, do you get 2x squared minus 13x plus 6? Yes. Set each factor equal to 0. To give us x equals 1 half or x equals 6. Those are two critical numbers. Will we have any more critical numbers? We have to ask ourselves, when is the derivative equal to zero? When is it undefined? Will this derivative ever be undefined? It's a polynomial function. Will it ever be undefined? No, it's always defined. So these are my only critical numbers, one half and positive six. Uh, what would I do next? I'd draw a number line. I have one half and six, and we're looking at the sine of f prime. And I, I write this out because on Tuesday we're going to be doing something using the sine of f double prime. I'll still wind up drawing a number line out. The concavity test looks very, very similar to this. You still wind up setting something equal to zero. You wind up finding these numbers and drawing a number line, but instead of using f prime we're going to take the derivative of the derivative so that's what's coming on Tuesday and then I would test intervals to the left of one half I can use any number I want to I would test something easy like zero <coughs> plug zero into the derivative that's going to give me a zero minus zero plus plus six that means the derivatives positive so the function is increasing from one half to six what do you want to test <coughs> one that's an easy number to plug in plug in one that'll give me a plugging it into the derivative we'll have a two minus thirteen plus six Positive or negative? The exact value doesn't matter, just positive or negative. Negative, that means the function is decreasing. And to the right of 6, I'm not going to use 7. 7 squared is 49. I'm going to use 10. 10 is an easy number to square. So that gives me f prime is equal to, we're plugging it into the derivative, 10 squared is 100 times 2, so we have 200 minus 130 and a plus 6. 
200 minus 130 plus 6. I agree, that's going to be positive again. So increase it. The last time, I think it was the first problem we did where we went through the entire process finding the uh, uh, increasing and decreasing intervals with the first derivative test, I think we wound up with a decrease, decrease, increase. So it doesn't always uh, alternate, but I'll tell you this much, in most instances you expect an alternating pattern. That first one that we started off with, I deliberately chose it so that it wouldn't alternate. But most of these, you should expect alternating patterns on most of them. The ones that don't alternate are uh, sort of uh, special. So let's summarize what we need. We need to know, uh, let's see, what are they asking for? Let me look back over here, okay? They're asking for local extrema. They're asking for local extrema. So local maximum and local minimum, local maximum and local minimum, well, we have a local maximum. It occurs when x is equal to 1 half. We, x is equal to 1 half. A local maximum occurs when the function's increasing to the left of the critical number, and then it starts decreasing. That means the graph has one of those peaks there. Do we have a local minimum? Yes, when it occurs when x is equal to 6. Now, they have a, there's a variety of ways that they could have you uh, express your answer. They may just say give the x value only, or they may want the, value, the x value and the y value. If they want the y value when x is equal to 1 half, what are you going to have to do? They're going to have to plug that into the original, and I think that's what they want right here. <coughs> No, it isn't. Okay, let's go back to the original problem. The function has a local minimum, no, as local maximum at x equals and a local minimum at x equals. Okay, they don't want, so we said it had a local maximum at one half. So one half goes in that first box right there and a local minimum at positive six. for our final answer.